I've been in wound care for over 15 years. I've been in private practice for 34 years. For the past 15 years, uh, my practice has been dedicated to wound management and limb salvage. I've written over 100 uh, papers in peer-reviewed journals and in trade journals. Uh, I'm finishing a master's degree at Cardiff University in uh, wound healing and tissue science. Presently, I am the medical director of the Wound Healing Center at University Hospital in Tamarack, Florida, uh, and I'm the treasurer of the AWC. Evidence in wound care uh, is, is sometimes difficult to determine uh, because of the variability of the patient population that we treat. Uh, obviously, uh, we want to, whenever possible, utilize randomized controlled trials to come up with a decision as to whether or not we're going to be uh, making a change in our practice. And certainly, when you have a number of randomized controlled trials, you can do something called a meta-analysis, which will truly give you uh, a good idea of whether or not the evidence is appropriate. Unfortunately, there, there are very few products uh, uh, thus far that have showed any statistical significance in, in clinical trials. Uh, and additionally, within the clinical trials, those patients are pristine patients, the patients that are in the inclusion criteria, particularly, let's say, in a diabetic foot study, will have well-controlled diabetes, will have uh, be very compliant, will be utilizing offloading to the extent that they should, and, and really a model patient. And unfortunately, that very often does not translate to the real world. So, so all that being said, I, I, I think wound management is unique in the fact that we have to begin looking at some other types of evidence. We have to look at consensus opinion, we have to look at posters, we have to look at um, uh, journals, we have to look at, um, at, at literature reviews, things of that nature to come up with a consensus for ourselves as to whether or not um, there is evidence to support what it is we do. Uh, I would love nothing more than to have randomized control trials for everything, but unfortunately in wound management, at least presently, uh, we just don't have that luxury. Uh, additionally, uh, unlike a, a study that would be done, let's say in cardiology, which may have 30,000 patients, we may have a randomized control trial that may have 60 patients. So unfortunately, if you have 30 patients in each arm, even if you have statistical significance, it, it, what does it really mean at the end of the day? I don't require different, ev different evidence for a biologic as I would for collagen dressing. I, I, I think that uh, we, have to, we have to use the same standard f for both. I think evidence-based medicine is evidence-based medicine. That being said, uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we oftentimes don't have that information and we have to make decisions based on those other, those other parameters uh, that I gave you. But I think evidence is evidence and, and uh, particularly if you're going to be using something every day in your practice, you should be doing something that, that has evidence to it. Insurance companies, uh, CMS, uh, both are going to be looking at evidence. Uh, if a product particularly is very costly and uh, there is no evidence to support it, it's likely, uh, unfortunately, that it may go away or won't be paid for. You know, and that also translates into pay for performance for the physicians and clinicians in the field. I think they're going to be looking at our outcomes. And if our outcomes are based on uh, good clinical algorithms and if they're based on good clinical evidence, whatever that is, whatever we decide that is, then uh, I think that we'll fall on the right side of that pay for performance.